Hi, welcome or welcome back. Today I'm going to be reacting to a new TikTok video that I saw on my feed and give you my perspective as a relationship coach. This one is an example of a healthy relationship, so what I'll do is share what I like about it, how you can get there too, and address some of the comments that I saw under this one because some of them are supportive in helping you build a healthy, loving, and long-term relationship, and some aren't at all. If I were watching this video in the past and then scrolling through the comments, I would have personally felt so anxious and confused depending on the comments that I read. And if you're new here, I'm Alex, a certified life and relationship coach and the face behind Toolbox for Love. I've been with my now husband, Dennis, for over 15 years, and this is a place where I share what I've learned and what I continue to learn about how to build a relationship that feels good to be in. All right, let's look at the video. So in this video, you see a couple in Paris right in front of the Eiffel Tower. They're hugging, they're being all lovey-dovey. And the text says, people wanting a relationship like ours. And then seconds later, it says us getting through the hardest phases of our relationship with, in the background, screenshots of long messages they've sent each other, missed calls. And then it looks like an empty Instagram feed when I guess they deleted pictures of themselves on their social media. When I look at this video, I go, yes, most relationships go through a difficult phase. So I love how this person is showing a sweet moment of her relationship and some behind the scenes. So often we see people's highlight reels and we compare ourselves to the side of the coin that they are showing us. So we see what's lacking in our own relationship, start to develop doubts, and we think other people's love life is easier or better when in reality, every single couple goes through phases. No relationship is picture perfect all the time. So let's look at the different phases that you might experience with someone. When you start dating, you typically go through a first phase called the honeymoon phase. This is when things feel new, they feel exciting. You see the best in each other. And this is when you're so in love that your brain dismisses certain aspects that might usually bother you. You're literally flooded with these love hormones that make it feel good. Then as you get to know each other and spend more time together, you start noticing each other's flaws and differences. You get into fights and have disagreements. You might have misunderstandings. And so this is when it feels frustrating, confusing, and exhausting, and you wonder if you're with the right person. That's the power struggle phase and the one that this person is describing by the hardest phase of our relationship. Some couples will experience a shorter honeymoon phase, and some will say that they really haven't experienced it. And so they go quicker to this power struggle phase. The power struggle phase is the one where most couples drift apart and and where breakups happen. I almost broke up with Dennis multiple times as well because we were in this phase for many years. Not every relationship is meant to be, but what I see happen is that we label the power struggle phase as something that's bad and like a sign that something is wrong. What you need to know is that this phase is normal and it's normal because when you date someone, you're dating their habits, you're dating their coping mechanisms, you're dating their personality, and you might have very different needs. You might have different ways of loving each other, different expectations, and a different idea of what a relationship looks like. There's this saying that conflict is growth trying to happen. Healthy couples experience conflict, but they see it as an opportunity to learn how to do things better next time. Unless you're in an abusive relationship, I encourage you to look at what conflict is showing you, what it's signaling, what is lying underneath, what unmet needs might be behind it. That's why a relationship takes work. The work is learning how to function together based on your needs, your values, your personalities, your life goals, your communication styles, your habits. It's understanding each other so that you can reach agreements and develop habits that make you feel like a team. It's overcoming conflict effectively in ways that don't leave you feeling like enemies every time. We often assume that we should naturally be good at relationships, but if you think about it, we don't naturally learn how to be healthy partners, how to create healthy relationships, how to communicate effectively, how to overcome challenges with someone as a team. Love is important, but love without relationship skills is why so many great relationships fall apart. To build a healthy relationship, you need the skills like the ability to have open, honest conversations, even when it's hard, so that you can be true to yourself, so that you can be authentic with each other, and so that you're not putting any of your needs aside. It's also being able to argue well, meaning that conflict doesn't harm the relationship, but you rather come out stronger as a couple, so you can have conflict, but then you don't feel like enemies at the end. It's also being able to reconnect through intentional actions so that you both feel heard, you both feel understood, you both feel appreciated on a regular basis. That's how you make sure that your needs are being met. 
it's also being able to be a great listener and show curiosity before you judge or jump to conclusions. It's taking accountability for how you show up. It's loving your partner the way they want to feel most loved so that you put your efforts in the right place. It's discussing your deal breakers, your needs, your expectations so that you can set healthy boundaries and standards that help you feel supported and help you grow in the same direction. And it's also being able to manage doubts, intrusive thoughts, and big emotions like anxiety, anger, sadness, so that you don't feel like you have zero control over them. Staying in a relationship becomes a choice, especially once the love hormones from the honeymoon stage fade. This doesn't mean that you won't feel love, connection, passion after that, but love does require actions. It does require these skills because feelings come and go. What the person in this video is showing is her being on the other side of that difficult stage. This is when you've been through tough times with your partner, you've overcome challenges and differences, and you have chosen to stay together. This is when you've developed ways to nurture the relationship so that you both feel loved and supported. That process creates deep levels of trust and connection because you start to feel very safe with the other person, and that's when you enter the mature stage of love. A metaphor that Dennis and I like to use to symbolize this stage is an anchor. Challenges still come up, but they don't rock our boat anymore. In this stage, you feel a genuine sense of peace and confidence about your relationship because you have learned from past challenges. You are now able to overcome lows much more efficiently without them causing instability and you've learned to function much better as a couple. That's also what people refer to as a secure relationship. Okay, now I wanted to address a few comments that I saw under this video, some that I agree with and some that I believe can really sabotage your progress depending on your situation. The first one is real love isn't easy and easy love isn't real. I don't fully agree with this one because healthy relationships can be easy. When two people are compatible, when they're able to communicate well, when they're able to resolve conflict effectively, they often experience less tension and more harmony so it feels like the relationship is effortless. Then although challenges and conflict are normal in a relationship, constantly struggling and facing difficulties doesn't necessarily mean that it's real love. Believing that love has to be difficult can lead you to staying in unhealthy or toxic relationships. Real love includes moments of joy and simplicity, as well as times that do require some understanding, patience, and work. The second comment I'm addressing is it's not about finding the perfect person, but about finding the right person who will stay and work things out with you with love and respect. I agree. It's not about finding someone who checks all your boxes, who makes no mistakes, and with whom you never get in conflict with, but rather someone you feel like you can grow with, someone who's willing to go through life with you, someone who shares similar values and life goals so that you feel like you're working in the same direction, someone you feel safe to go through challenges with, and someone who can learn to love you and vice versa. The next comment is spend a week alone doing the things that you love and you'll come back stronger. These arguments stem from losing yourself in relationships and trying to mesh both of you into one. I'm not really a fan of this one because one, it's overly simplistic. Issues in a relationship aren't always because you're losing yourself. And two, because spending a week alone, if you feel like you're losing yourself, gives you temporary relief, but it's not a sustainable solution. It's so important to maintain individual interests and time apart, but I also believe that you get to learn how to carve out that time for you on a day-to-day -day basis without having to escape to do that. If you go on a solo trip, it's because you genuinely want to do that. It's not to escape a situation. You might feel stronger when you come back, for sure, but then the same patterns, the same cycles will repeat unless you address them. If I feel like I'm losing myself in my relationship, before I consider spending a week alone to do the things that I love, I want to look at what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis to fill my cup, how often I express my needs and preferences, and where I typically just go with the flow at the expense of my own needs so that I can build up the courage to voice my needs, voice my expectations, voice my preferences instead of suppressing them. The next comment was, I'm in this phase right now and she threatens to break up every time we have an argument, big or small. If you relate to this and have also threatened to break up when you have an argument, I would encourage you to drop that breakup card. And if your partner is the one who's using that card, I recommend discussing things that are off limits when you fight, things that you don't want to keep doing, and alternatives to help you fight constructively in ways that actually lead to a resolution. Frequent threats to break up creates an unstable environment, which makes it hard to build trust and it makes you both feel insecure about the future that you have together. If there's always the option to break up, you'll be living in fear and anxiety and like you're walking on eggshells. 
a healthy relationship involves effective communication and conflict resolution. Threatening to break up is a short-term fix and it's an impulsive reaction. We all get triggered and have an initial reaction that can feel irrational, out of our control, and unhealthy, especially when we're upset. The part of us that shows up during conflict that feels out of our control is there for various reasons, but we need to learn how to manage it so that it doesn't sabotage our relationships. I've had clients who have threatened to break up during conflict, and then they've shared how bad they felt afterwards. They don't actually want to break up, but that's their go-to way of dealing with difficult situations. We become mature and healthy partners when we're able to choose our response to situations, when we can notice a trigger but don't feel controlled by our reactions, our emotions, and when we feel proud of the way we're showing up. The next comment is, it didn't lead anywhere for us. I get that, not every relationship works out. For a relationship to work and for you to get through the power struggle phase, you first need to both be willing to make it work. You then need to be compatible in important areas like your life goals and your values. And you need to learn relationship skills like the ones I mentioned earlier. For example, if one of you wants kids and the other absolutely doesn't, you'll need to find an agreement or else that's an area you'll be incompatible in, so that might be the reason that you don't get through this power struggle phase. Time alone doesn't solve things, and willingness alone isn't enough to get you through challenges. Again, we don't naturally learn how to be healthy partners and build a healthy relationship, so if you're feeling stuck and confused as to how to overcome challenges in your relationship, it's okay to reach out to someone. That can be a friend, a therapist, get a course. I know some options are more accessible to some people than others, but so often we don't even ask for help because we think we have to manage everything on our own and we think that we should naturally know how to handle things. We need to drop the belief that asking for help is a sign of weakness or a sign that the relationship is in trouble. Not knowing what exercises you should do for your body type doesn't make you dumb. And you don't have to wait to be sick to start to eat well or work out. You eat well and you work out so that you avoid getting sick. If you don't know how to exercise or what foods you should eat according to your body type and according to your condition, you're better off reaching out for support rather than trying these different things and not knowing how effective your approach is. You can make efforts and still see little results because you're not making efforts in the right direction according to your situation. Just the other day, I went to the dentist and she spotted areas on my teeth that could potentially develop into cavities if I didn't treat them. I thought I was doing everything right, especially since I had just been to another dentist last year and they didn't spot anything. Having someone external look at my situation, whom I trust and who knows about teeth, actually helped me prevent future cavities and in the end helped me save time and money. We have experts and resources for a reason. Not every expert, not every resource will resonate with us, but we have options. If we want to give ourselves a chance to build a healthy relationship with someone, we need to drop the belief that seeking support is negative and that we should naturally know how to do things even if we haven't learned how. And the last comment is we had two toxic years and we have not argued in over a year and a half. We are so happy right now. Three amazing happy years. It's worth it. That was the same for Dennis and I. The first two years were the rockiest until we almost broke up and took that opportunity to clarify what needed to happen for each of us to give the relationship another chance. That's when we clarified our non-negotiables. We started to learn how to manage conflict. We learned how to understand each other so much better and how to manage our emotions. And that was us putting in the work. When you can go, we've been through rocky times and have learned to deal with them and are now on the other side, your happiness levels increase because you trust each other even more, you know how to handle situations more effectively, you've developed ways to love and connect with each other, and you feel so much more confident about the relationship. All right, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts on this video are or what you've learned from this, and subscribe to be notified for the next part of the series. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you in the next one.